There we go. Okay, so here's what we get to cover today. The exciting problem solving plan. Excellent. So we have talked about linear equations ax plus b equals c. Now we need to actually do some word problems using linear equations, solving them using linear equations. So you're going to read the problem, you'll assign it a variable, you'll write an equation, and then you'll solve. The main thing you need to avoid is trying to do all of it at once. If you try to do it all at once, what happens? It'll crash. It'll crash. If the question is relatively simple, it might work. If it's not so simple, what will happen? It'll be much harder for you. Break it down into the pieces that you understand. Break it down into pieces that are easily digestible. So here's a question I would like you to work on in random groups. It's very exciting. But so far, what's the first thing you tried to do on this question? Set up an equation. But what's when should you set up the equation? After you've read it and you've signed variables. So what are your variables going to represent? What to answer this question, you need to find out what the number, of number of nickels and the number of quarters. quarters. So how many variables do we have? Two. two. So what two variable names do you want to use? So what is x going to be? Number of quarters, okay. And what's y going to be? Nickels. Nice. What's one relationship between x and y that you know? X plus y is equal to 25. X plus y is equal to 25. That is correct. Now you have two variables. How many equations do you need? Two equations. So you have one equation. Your challenge right now, you have to find out the second equation could be. Yeah, Jacob. Ah, okay. Here's one version of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like this. 0.25x. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what does this represent? What does 0.25 times x represent? What quarters? Their favorite food? Like, what is that? The the value. the value, thank you. That's important. The value of the quarters. How many quarters? X of them, right? What's this right there? The value of the nickels. And you know that the value of the nickels plus the value of the quarters has to equal $5.65. Some of you converted to cents, which you totally can do, and you'll get the same answer. What's the, what's one of the, what's one of the advantages to converting to cents? It, you get the same answer, but what's one of the advantages to the process of converting to cents if you wanted to? It's easier to break down. It's easier to break down. Why? Because you get rid of the dollar. Instead of 0.25, what would you write? Use, it, use the same. Um, 0.25 dollars is how many cents? You get rid of the decimals. decimals. So if you use cents, it gets rid of the decimals, but it makes the number. It's a balance. Do you get the same answer? Yeah, you do. So solve for me. Yeah. So what should it be? Five. Zero 0.05. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, you are correct. So now, theoretically, if you have two equations and two variables, can you solve? Ah, uh, yeah, substitute. So what is y equal from the first equation? And where can you plug that in? Right there. So you get 0 0.25 times 25 minus x plus 0. No. Oh, it's the y. Oh, man, I made a bad mistake there, didn't I? Oh, man, I got to do this. And now what do I get? 0 0.25x plus 0 0.05 times what? 25 minus x is equal to 5.65. How many equations is that? That's one equation. How many variables are in it? One. So theoretically, can you solve? The equation also would be the same thing as if you multiplied this by 100. So you'd have 25x plus 5 times 25 minus x is equal to. Is that a little easier to solve for you? Okay, I think it's easier to solve. Maybe you don't. Right, we're done for a second. Here, let's pause. Everybody, hands up. Hands up. Everybody face forward. Hands up. There you go. Good. Who got 12 for x? Anybody get 12 for x? 1.2. Okay. That's probably not going to be correct. Why? It's a number of quarters. Okay. I think the answer is 12. I think the answer is 12. So if... 
Oh wait, did I just do the math wrong? I don't think 12 seconds. Oh, look at that. No, what am I doing here? I can't do it. What am I doing here? That's terrible math. 440 over 20 is the same thing as 44 over 2, which is the same thing as what? 22. I am totally wrong. Totally wrong. This guy right here. Right here. So if it's if that's the number of quarters, how do we figure out the number of dimes? 25, right? Yeah. So we think it's going to be 25 minus 22 okay. equals how many nickels? So how do we check to see if this is the correct answer? Negative. Yeah, 22 times 25 plus 3 times 5. What's 22 times 25? Can anybody do that? Uh, what is that? Anybody got it? No. Someone do it for me. 550, 550 plus 15 is 565. Woo! Nice. 22. Um, distance, right? Rate times time. Distance equals rate times time. That's the one hint I'm going to give you. So, who drew a picture of the situation? Yeah, so you have two cars starting in the same spot. One's going east at how, fa oh, how fast is that? 40 miles per hour? And then you have a car going west at 50 miles an hour? You know that distance is equal to rate times time, and you have the eastbound car, and you have the westbound car. What's the rate of the eastbound car? What's the rate of the e Thank you. What's the rate of the westbound car? To answer this question, are you telling me how many pennies there are? No. What are you telling me? Time. That's a noun. Give me a sense. You would tell me... How long the cars would be traveling for? Are the cars tra are each car traveling? Are they traveling the same amount of time for the same amount of time or different amounts of time? Same, because they're starting at the same time. So that's what we're solving for. What variable do you want to call that? T. Distance is rate times time. So how far has the east car traveled after t hours? Forty t. And how far has the west car traveled after? Oh, fifty t. So now we want to know together, together, together how far have they gone after t? What? 300, but it's going to be 40t plus, plus 50t. So do you have your equation now? Yes. You do. 40t plus 50t is equal to 300. If you solve that, what do you end up with? Stop using decimals. I hate decimals. Don't use decimals. Please, 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 don't, 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 don't. Because you round, 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 and then it's wrong, 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 wrong. So, ten thirds. There it is, right there. Ten thirds. That's better. I mean, shoot, if you say 33 hours and 33 minutes, you're then 33 seconds off. But then if you had 33 seconds, then you're at, you're a third of a second off. But then if you say that, you're a third of a third of a second. Oh, man. Just keep saying, just say ten thirds. And then everybody's happier. Well, maybe you're not, but I am. And that's what really matters, right? That's a joke. That's a joke. Funny. Funny. How's the chart getting set up? <laughs> there's biking and there's driving, right? Yep. And there's distance, rate, and time. Uh, what, do we, what can we fill in? Jeff can bike to work in three – oh, time for biking. So that's three quarters of an hour. When he takes the bus, the trip takes one fourth of an hour. If the bus, if the bus travels twenty miles fast miles per hour faster than Jeff rides his bike, so do we know what we'll call this R? If that's R, how fast is he driving? R plus twenty. If if this is the rate and this is the time for biking, what's the distance for biking? three-fourths times r. If this is the rate and this is the time for driving, what's the distance? Distance is rate times time. So what's it going to be? What am I filling in right here, Kelly? Distance is rate times time, correct? Yes. So we have rate and time. So what is the distance for driving? Distance is R rate. Plus 20. Ah, R plus 20 times. Yes. Are they making a different trip or the same trip when they're driving or biking? Same trip. So what do you know about the distance? 
for each one. So what equation can I write? Someone tell me what equation I can write down. Katie, 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 go for it. Yes. Yeah. Equals what? Yeah. There you go. There it is. Can you solve for R? Solve for R for me. What should I multiply by first? <laughs> what? <laughs> Bless you. What? Eh, try better. <laughs> better. Wow. Wow. That is an emphatic sneeze. What could I multiply by to make my life a lot easier? Kelly? Deep breath. What could I multiply by to... I know, I know he's... Kids, uh, rah, 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 blinky up here. What could I multiply by to make this easier? Multiply both sides by 4. Ah, excellent. If you multiply both sides by 4, what happens? What happens to the 1 fourth on the left? R plus 20 equals... What happens when you multiply by 4 on the right? 3R. Does that make things a lot easier pretty quick? 20 is equal to 2R. R is equal to 10. So what does that mean our answer is? Biking rate is what? 10 miles per hour. And the driving is? 30 miles per hour. It all comes down to the chart. Geometry. Yeah. The sum of the internal angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. Together and see what we get. So you know you've got three angles. So you're going to have x plus x plus 20 plus 210 minus 3x is equal to what? 180. So then we have 2x plus 20 plus 210 minus 3x is equal to 180. How many x's do I have on the left? What? Nope. Nope. How many x's do I have? Negative x. I have negative one of them. Plus 230 equals 180. What do I subtract from both sides? So you get negative x is equal to negative what? 50. So x is equal to? 50. What? My math. <laughs> it was your math and the math? Well, it's good that you're in math class, huh?